All right, what else do we have here, George? So this is the elk tongue. This is the this is the front of the tongue. Front of it. Oh, that's a big tongue. And this goes all the way back. So uh, you basically go. The best way to get at the tongue is not through the mouth, but you cut right at the corner of the head and the neck. Okay. And you'll hit the attachment point where the tongue is, right here. You okay. Can see it. That's the attachment point. How do you cook it? So the best way to cook it, um, there's a couple of different ways, but the way I've seen most often is uh, to boil it with spices, mm -hmm. and then uh, after it's boiled, uh, skin it. So, so take the skin off, and then uh, cook it as, uh, uh, well, uh, and then slice it thinly. Like uh, it makes great sandwich meat. Oh, okay. My mother used to make cow tongue. Yeah. And she ground it up and made sandwich meat that way. So yeah, you can. Do... And there's quite a few different ways of doing it. You know, like a, a, Sp a Spanish or Mexican lingua. Uh-huh. Uh, lingua tacos. That's basically tongue tacos. Uh, you can also make, like, uh, Lebanese uh, uh, sandwiches most often use tongue. In fact, I just bought some. Uh, I do buy a little lamb here and there. Okay. And I bought about five pounds of lamb tongue. Oh, last week. Okay, where'd you get it at? Um, there's a there's a market on 45th South called the uh, Black Cherry. Uh, not 45th South. 40 yeah, 45th South. 45th South and about 900 East. It's oh, called okay. Black Cherry Market, and okay. it's all Mediterranean, Middle Eastern. Okay. And uh, that's a good spot. I like to get. There's a lot of different things that you can get there. All right, and this is in Salt Lake City, this so. Is in Salt Lake. All right, good. All right. Okay. So here's our uh, front quarter. It's been washed off. Now we're going to, uh, to need to clean it off a little bit more, but it's not as clean as I normally like it. But when I'm by myself and uh, trying to bag up uh, the quarters, sometimes it's the best you can do. Sometimes, yeah. And it's going to be trimmed out anyway, so it's not that big a deal. So clean it up a little bit. And you like to do your own, your own butchering, so you know what's in there. That oh wow. Right. Yep. So here's the, here's the. You were asking earlier about the brisket. Right. So this is basically the elk brisket oh. here. Okay. So okay. I, what I do is I follow along the breastbone. Uh huh. And split it, and then keep it attached to the, to the quarter. And. Okay, and then we'll cut it. that off at some point in time and yep, just make it into it brisket. Yep. And so great to smoke it with a little hickory or mesquite. Okay. It's a little tough. You know, it's not like a beef brisket because it's got very little fat, you'll see. Yeah. But um, it tastes pretty good. How do you cook it? What's the I easy? usually do about a six-hour smoke. Okay. So I usually only smoke for the, the actual smoke for two hours and then low and slow for another four hours. Okay. So it's about, um, usually about 165 degrees. So you don't do this when you get home from work then? No, this is an all day affair. <laughs> this, is a, this is a sit around and uh, have a, a couple whiskeys or a couple beers and, and all right. uh, have, have a nice relaxing Saturday. Sounds great. All right. Okay. Get started with the hind quarter. And probably the first thing to do is actually to take that brisket off. Just follow that seam around there, don't you? Follow the seam. There's a little extra fat in here. I'm just kind of cleaning up. It makes it easier to see where the mm -hmm. where the actual line is. And then it, at some point, you just hit that, that uh, Oh yeah, muscle. yeah, there you go. So that's a separate muscle, whole separate muscle that you're cutting off there. Yep. Trim off some of this fat on here. 
needs a little less fat to trim off when, when we're getting a final trim. All right, so that's the brisket then. That's the brisket. Are you going to make, would you probably, that would be two briskets almost, wouldn't it? I mean, that's a big piece. It's a big piece. We'll probably cut it. It's, it takes a little bit of trimming. It, it takes time to work the brisket. But. So we got some it. liver, some tongue, some brisket, and the back strap in there right now. Yep. All right. That's exactly right. And then just start working. Cutting off pieces. So the the difficulty with the with the front quarter is the scapula. You've got this big honking piece of bone that dulls your knife really quickly and just makes things tricky. There's all these little small intricate muscles in the front quarter. And so trying to Trying to be as precise like you are with the hindquarter is kind of a fruitless effort. It's, um, there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of this stuff will end up just being ground just because there's just so, it's just so limited how much. I mean, right, you can see right here is all bone right through here. And okay. it gets, you so know, the bone gets kind of soft on the, on the edges. You can see right here. Mm -hmm. But this is all bone, all through here. Okay. So, so you take a little I bit mean, off. I mean, this is hard bone right here. Okay, okay. So there's nothing you, I mean, there's you no can't get any more off this. You might be able to get a little bit by doing some, some digging in here. But it's going to be fairly really, it's, limited. It's, it's, Point of diminishing returns is what it you're is. saying. It is. Yep. So, I mean, we can pull some out of this just by kind of, it's kind of like filleting a fish. Just kind of filleting it through. And we can get some, probably some good burger meat out of this. Oh, yeah. But you're not going to get any roast. Not with something that's, or steaks. That is one big, big bone, isn't it? It is very big. And that's why, you know, people always talk about how tough elk are. And it's because when you hit them in the shoulder, you're hitting that big bone. And it's big, and especially if you hit it in the right spot, it's pretty thick. I mean, if you hit it right here, and it is going to be, you know, that's a good inch thick right there. Wow. And you shot this with a muzzle loader. I did, yeah. In fact, I don't know if I have the bullet or not. I do. All right. That's the bullet. It hit some bone on the way in, so you can see on the one side the pedals deformed. Oh yeah. And pushed inward. Uh huh. But the rest of the pedals performed as 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 it intended. In fact, actually, the little expansion point is still still attached. Is that what is that? Forty caliber? It's a forty-five. Barnes. Uh, well, Zach got, Zach got, is that solid copper? It's solid copper, yep. Okay. And uh, with a little plastic expansion tip. Well, that's what I'm seeing here, the, the, the little, little plastic expansion tip. Okay. Yep. So, at this point. Now we just go to the back then, huh? Yeah, we just kind of go back and forth between sides. and Just go back and forth. All right. Yeah, this is, there's real, you can't get anything out of this. So this Just is, throw that away. Yeah. You can, I mean, you, you can cut it off to about this point. My daughter's dog's next door chewing on the uh, first hind quarter right now. Yeah. Uh, Lots of, uh, if you have a dog, the scraps on this would be phenomenal dog food. Okay, so this is not the big, big hunks that we're used to. Huh? No, nope, it's much different than the hind quarter, where, you know, with the hind quarter, you're getting those classic roasts, big steaks. This is all, you know, small little muscles, 
you know, interspersed amongst bone, and it's just, it's a just much different... nitpicky sort of stuff. It is. Trying to get a little bit of meat out of uh, all the stuff. That yep, had. you're just trying to get, get some of that meat and, and uh, get it... Uh, so probably the biggest chunk is the brisket then, isn't it? Uh, almost. You'll get some, there'll be some roast. Like this chunk right here, uh -huh. there's actually a little vein that kind of intersperses it, but it's still, it, you can get some good roasts out of it. It's just, you get, like, this is, see, here's hard bone right oh, here. Oh, okay. And there's that ridge line. So you can get some steaks, you know, some steaks or some roasts out of it. Like, this cut right here is a good one. And uh, you can get a few, like, this can be, a, can sometimes be a roast. It depends on the, depends on the animal and okay. how much, how much sinew and versus bone and muscle. Um, but... Generally, you can get about two or three roasts out of the front, and then the rest generally is stew meat or hamburger meat. So, and then the other downside about the front quarter is because you're working around bone so much, it does dull your knife pretty quickly. So I always try to be really careful about how much how much bone I try to hit. And so, like this. It's just a matter of filleting. Kind of work it through. And in some cases, the bone and knife works a little bit better because it's got that little fillet point. And then you so just, you're just cutting up into it as close to the bone as you can without dulling your knife then, huh? Yep, that's pretty much it. Through. Okay, okay. Well, that's a nice big chunk of meat, though. Yeah. There's a, like I said, there's a little vein, and you can kind of see it a little bit right here. There's a little bit of silver skin that runs through it. Uh-huh. But it's, I mean, it makes it a little bit of a tougher roast, but it still makes a pretty good roast. It's, it's probably better as a pot roast. Okay, slow cooking. First slow, though. yeah, slow cook it a little bit. It, a little moisture. Yeah, it turns out pretty good. So. So this year you've got an antelope? Nope, I haven't gotten an antelope. But you got one last year then? I got an antelope last year. Turkey? I got a turkey this spring. No deer? I haven't gotten a deer. No. Nope. Had come close, but just never had shots. You got any uh, grouse yet? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I have gotten a couple of grouse. I got a brace opening day. All right. A brace is what? Two. Two. Okay. That's sorry. That's a that's a grouse hunter's term. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then, now you're gonna work on that other big muscle, then, yeah. huh? This is another big one. There's a lot of it's around a lot of bone, but it goes almost all the way to the other side. There's just a little bit that hangs out on the scapula, and so if you can get it off that scapula. See, I mean, you can see how big yeah. piece of